what 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 just happened to us? Well, I had a nice bowl of popcorn that I was just gonna eat on and just have fun with. A little clumsy me. Ugh. Popcorn. <laughs> so funny. <laughs> well, let me go get a broom. Yeah, let's clean that up. <laughs> Golly. guys and welcome back to another episode of the web show i'm here with the co-host topaz Topaz. you already know uh and i'm really excited because in this episode we've already talked a little bit uh in just the prep and everything about what we talk about and it's going to be kind of a laid back experience which i I like because a few episodes ago we had another one of these laid back experiences where we just kind of got to know each other a little bit better. We asked you guys mm-hmm. to submit questions. Uh, still waiting on those compiling so that we have oh, yeah. uh, some great stuff coming up. We don't have quite enough for uh, for an episode yet, so definitely uh, definitely go back or even in, in the comment section of this video or on this audio. Let me uh, let me know some questions that you'd like to know about us, uh, and we'll we'll try to compile those and, and get those together for you. But yeah, in that same kind of realm, uh, I've actually I've had a really interesting week where I've I've remained busy, uh, but but in a different way, like busy with work, but manageable. And in that ability to manage my busyness, uh, I've actually been able to just kind of play for fun a little bit. Mm-hmm. And that's been really cool because I don't normally get to do that. Yeah. And uh, amidst playing some really cool games on stream that uh, because it's October, which means it's pumpkin season. I'm a pumpkin. Streamtober. This is it. You know, this, this, this is how I do my life. And uh, and we've been playing some really cool games on there that I, I haven't played before. Like the first week of October, we played through Pumpkin Jack, little indie game, really good. Ten out of ten, would recommend. Yeah, it was really good. Really, really cool game. Looking at you play, it was nice. Appreciate that. Appreciate that. I uh, and like the second week of October, I've been playing Luigi's Mansion. First time ever playing the first one. I've played the third one before. I played it with crowd control, which always makes things. Uh, fun, but yet also kind of kind of hectic, kind of haywire. Mm-hmm. Really enjoying that. Later in the month, we get some phasmophobia coming up. Not looking as much uh, ahead to that because I don't do well with, with scaredy, <laughs> spooky, scary skeleton games. Uh, and then we have actual Halloween, which I haven't decided what I'm going to do yet. So it's it's been pretty cool playing some new games in that realm. Mm-hmm. But then there's also been time for me to just kind of play games on the side. One in particular, and then I'm going to be quiet, and I'm going to give you a chance to talk and tell me about the games you've been playing and, and what you're looking forward to and all that kind of good stuff. But one in particular that really surprised me that I'm excited to talk to you about because you're a mobile gamer in the in like a Pokemon Go kind of sense. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm not a mobile gamer usually, uh, but I have recently really kind of gotten into Call of Duty Mobile. It really surprises me because I don't even like Call of Duty, if I'm being completely honest. But I'm like... I'm really playing this game, and I'm gonna talk some more about it later. But I think I'm kind of good at it, so I'm I'm excited. I'm I'm surprised. I'm but I'm yeah, is I'm killing it. So anyway, yeah, I'm gonna be quiet. Tell me, tell me about what gaming's been like for you recently. You know, because you've been you've been really busy too. So how how's yeah. gaming been for you? Um, well, we've talked about it on episodes past mm-hmm. where gaming is uh my wind down my yeah, time to chill i think you've described it as like a release my release mm-hmm. yeah so i do i game every day a couple hours hour even more on the days that i'm not working oh <laughs> he said i'm a real gamer i try to game every chance i get every day is game day that's um, it so uh in those in those times i've of course we plan see we plan we're playing Sea of Thieves. We're I love it. playing Fortnite. Um, um, I just recently got into this one game because I'm an Animal Crossing fan mm-hmm. and Dreamlight Valley fan and uh, Sims fan. Even though I haven't given Sims a lot of time in my older years. And with Sims, you're meaning like specifically like the, the Sims, Sims. Yeah, yeah, not just all Sims. simulators. Gotcha. Yeah, I didn't know about simulators to you came in my life. Well, that's what Sims is short. I for. know. Oh, yeah. I didn't know. That was the thing. I was just like, it's just these people with little 
little diamonds over their head and they're called sims yep <laughs> they have sim simolonians or whatever the money's called it's not but simians anyway, probably i don't know um continue <laughs> so thanks for You're the welcome. knowledge I, you know you wrinkles. know guys Webby, you know he has that that um the wrinkly brain mm -hmm. so he has a lot of knowledge and i've learned a lot from him that and a lot of that stuff probably hasn't stick stuck in my head you have to remind me about a lot of stuff anyway so um playing this game it's uh called coral island don't know if i've said the name of that game but um it's uh kind of all of that in one um and it's still in development um it's a game still in development and uh they're still releasing things to it so if you haven't played it uh and if you like uh like animal crossing or games like that um grinding games farming games all that kind of stuff then pick it up it's on um what is it on? It's, it's on, on Game Pass. Game Pass. But PC only. Actually, so it's on Game Pass, but being PC only, I haven't checked. There's a decent chance that it's also on Steam, mm -hmm. uh, being PC only. I'll check that right now while we're... Uh, yeah. It is. It's on Steam right now for $25. So oh. uh, that is an option. Yep. Uh, and it looks like uh, you get the soundtrack too. There's a bundle. So, yep, that, that's an option for it. Huh. Um, so yeah, so they're still developing that and it's pretty, it's pretty, it's Animal Crossing, like, uh, mechanics, I guess. Mm -hmm. Um, you got the museum, you got, well, I'm not going to tell you guys, but it's a, it's a really cool game. Um, there's a, what's that view you were saying that this game it's is like in? isometric top down, isometric top, get top down mm -hmm. view, which is something to get used to, but it, I think after playing it, it for a day or some hours, then you you'll be like, okay. It's very Animal Crossing New Horizons yeah. to me. Yeah, yeah, it, it looks a lot like that. I um, I might would like it. I I think I thought I liked this type of game when I was playing Animal Crossing. Mm -hmm. uh, to be completely honest, mm -hmm. and I mean they're fine. They just take so many hours. Yeah. The thing with Animal Crossing that I think made it so successful in this Tom genre. Uh, definitely not that guy. Uh, no, he, some people really <laughs> he like him. It, he did he, make it successful. He makes it memorable. You're right. <laughs> he charged everything. That's probably. fair. He, um, I never, it's funny when you look back at it and you realize that you spend so much time and everything enjoying a game where you get to pay off a mortgage. Yeah. I'm already paying off a mortgage. I'm having way, way less fun in real life doing it. But, uh, no, when I think about it, I think the things that really set Animal Crossing up uh, for great success is it was already an established IP. Mm -hmm. That helps. Mm -hmm. uh, but also, it was right at the beginning of 2020. Everybody's locked yeah, in their house. Definitely. It, nothing to do. And uh, being, the Switch is, like, kind of the perfect system for it. It was the less expensive system, uh, so it was a little bit easier for families to obtain in these, in these moments. And uh, since it's handheld and docked, people, you know, had options. I think mm -hmm. that... Uh, I think that the Sim, not Sim, sorry, Animal Crossing, really plays well in handheld. It, like it feels really cutesy as mm -hmm. a as a handheld option, especially when you look at the Switch Lite being an even cheaper version of that. Uh, and since the Switch is kind of viewed as a handheld, it's also that system that people tend to have more than one of them in their household. Yeah. Like uh, if you think about your home or, or many people's homes, it's not very normal to have like multiple Xboxes or multiple PlayStation, mm -hmm. uh, but it's very common to have multiple Switches mm -hmm. because it's, it's the handheld. People play on their own. So mm -hmm. it just, it had a lot of things going for it, I think. Unfortunately, one of those things was a, a worldwide pandemic, but, uh, but I'm grateful for it because it kind of kept us, in a weird way, it kind of kept us together. Yeah. Uh, so, or I, even got us closer. Yeah. It yeah. Kinda, I mean, and it was it was such a phenomenon. Like I I can't believe I did this, but I had so much fun having um, having Animal Crossing pulled up on my Switch in front of me and handheld mm -hmm. while my computer was behind it, and I was on Nookazon, and which was uh, I don't even think that exists anymore. But it was literally a, no no Nookazon still does. I think it's mostly a Discord page now though. No, I was on Turnip Exchange. And uh, which was a website. Have you heard of this? Mm -mm. Oh my god! I gosh. haven't heard of Nukazan either. What? Yeah, you missed out on the whole cultural phenomenon, man. Okay, so do you know about like time traveling in in uh, Animal Crossing? You're serious. You don't know how to time travel. So you played Animal Crossing completely legitimately. Like you you got up, and if it was daytime, outside, oh yeah 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 yeah. Okay, <laughs> I'm thinking you're saying like 
you're going back in time to your parents or what? something. That's what, when you, you say time about? travel or you're going to the future. I'm like, no, I don't know nothing about t- time traveling kind of. and Animal Crossing. I remember when I first found out about it, I thought it was wild because I'd never played any you of the other Animal me. Crossing. You're going to make me go back and play Animal Crossing just to go see you some You should because it's pumpkin season, but no, that's not what I mean. <laughs> I mean, like, I remember watching a streamer uh, because of jumping around and everything, and it was like middle of July. And I got on Twitch. I was watching a streamer, and I and on his Amazon or on his Animal Crossing, he was catching snowflakes. Mm-hmm. And I was like, "What is it this? Is not, it is not Christmas or winter." Well, uh, so that's the other cool, really cool thing, in my opinion, about mm-hmm. Animal Crossing is your region matters as well. You know, you can do like northern and southern hemisphere. Yeah. And so, if you're southern hemisphere, uh, it's cold there when it's hot here. Mm-hmm. And so that's what I thought it was at first, but then I realized that he just jumped forward couple months in his switch if you don't know what i'm talking about i'm not going to go into a whole tutorial about it now but you could change the time on your switch's system yeah and uh and that's where animal crossing would pull its uh it would pull its information from yeah and so anyway that happened yeah, uh, that's what you're talking about i knew about that okay with the first animal crossing game or yeah with on the gamecube yeah yeah all yeah. right well that's one thing that is more known but no nook is on it's still a Discord page. Uh, I don't even think I'm in it anymore. Uh, but it was a website slash Discord page where, kind of like Amazon, mm-hmm. where you could go and you could shop for items. So, like, say you had a grand piano or something, but you wanted a white <sighs> grand piano. You could shop on there, and there would be people who were bidding it that had the had it in their catalog. And they would gift it to you? Uh, no, you'd have to go to their island. They'd give you an island code. Uh, okay. You'd drop whatever they were uh. selling it for. Uh, so that could be, you know, 200,000 bells, or it could be a different recipe, like they wanted to trade. Uh, Wait a minute. Maybe in a lot of ways it was more like a Craigslist, but then you'd go over to their island, they'd drop it, you'd pick it up, and then uh, and then you drop it back for them and everything, and it would add it to your catalog. Now I don't know if this was connected to to how some streamers or um, yeah streamers who play the game they have islands where it's like islands you can um, probably win a chance to or you can get in on the stream and get in on the code and get a chance to go to their island and pick up anything you want and they have multiple uh, oh. things set out set out kind of um, like a shop yeah it was that was the dopest thing i've ever ever that's i got a bunch of crowns from somebody's island i got a bunch of bunch of very uh expensive things which gave me a bunch of money and that Neat. was that was kind of a cool thing and it's probably something that's still going on today oh surely because there's still animal crossing Speaking is that of, game I need that to go to somebody's island well, Animal Crossing is that game that like people would uh, like play forever. Yeah. So before New Horizon came out, I still know people who were like daily driving New Leaf mm-hmm. on the 3DS, hmm. uh, which is wild. But anyway, so that was Nook is on. Uh, you get the idea because Tom Nook, Nook is on. Yeah. But the one that I really was on was called Turnip Exchange, and it made me a billionaire. Uh, because turnips. In, in the game, yeah, you can buy turnips, which is and it's the stock market, mm-hmm. uh, and it literally is like a gamble. It's it's the stock market. Mm-hmm. You can buy them on Sunday, and you've got all week to sell them. I hated each that. day, I bet you did. Well, each day the prices were different, right? But prices would also be different for different people on different islands, Topaz. And so yes. on on uh, TurnipExchange dot co or whatever it was. Uh, you people would have listed what their turnip prices were, mm-hmm. and you could get in a waiting line or whatnot, or or offer whatever it was, and get into a queue. And it literally would be a queue that stayed on your screen. And I waited there for like hours while I was playing, and then it would be like you're next, mm-hmm. and it would send you a dodo code so that you could get on a plane and you could drive or you could go over there and sell your turnips at their store. And they did it good too, because you know how there was always the airport. Yeah. They would, and if you don't allow non friends to move stuff, like you can set up your island and have it set up so that like people who aren't your friends cannot change the way your island looks. Mm -hmm. So they'd build up like brick walls basically around uh, the ramp and they'd stand in the way because there's collision. You can't walk through someone and you'd have to pay up before (laughs) you could pass them. Then you could go sell. It was crazy. But uh, yeah, no, I remember. It's crazy what uh, COVID does to somebody sitting at their computer. I. (laughs) have well over two uh, well over two million bells uh quickly that way and nice. uh it was, it was pretty cool uh but i also like the tar- the stock market was good to me but i was i got way too stressed out because i almost lost it all i remember i was streaming one day and every i had my house fully upgraded 
had all the stuff took away because I was so invested in it. And every floor was covered in turnips. And then when you walked <laughs> outside, I had this like, I called it the pumpkin patch. It had pumpkins in it, but I'd killed it. It was like a big walled off garden, completely full of turnips. I was like, I've spent my whole life savings on turnips. That's how you play. That's how you play, bro. <laughs> it was all or nothing, baby. It was like playing blackjack. Because you got it. You're like, I'm all in. You got to have something turnips. to give Tom Nook. But I'm telling you, dude, if I was about to he lose it all, you. because if it didn't work it. out on the last day, I was going to have to sell it. And if I, 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 I could have lost it all. Because mm. after, so here's the thing after the seventh day, when it gets back to Sunday, the turnips rot. Mm-hmm. And then they're not worth anything sure anymore. But pro tip, if you're just now starting to play the game, let one rot uh, because that's how you can attract ants. And then you can get ants for blathers. <laughs> so uh, anyway, yeah, yeah. Um, I don't know how this turned into like... Well, Coral Island, it, it's, uh, it's, <laughs> it's the new Animal Crossing um, and so much more. Yeah, of course. There's everything on this game. Well, what I mean is like, is there that type of thing? Is there like a, a no. stock market? I don't know. I don't know. But there's, since it's still in development, there's a lot of things that are coming. So you got um, um, online play, all that kind of stuff. Uh Um, They're still adding all that stuff and having um, packs. Oh, what is it? uh, Updates. Yeah. Um, Yeah. yeah. Because it's in early access. Yes. Mm -hmm. Um, So it's a bunch of that on here. And I don't like, it's like you're, you're waiting for what I'm trying to say. Um, it's coming, so you just gotta wait. All right. But there's a lot in it already because it it's been in. The, I feel like it was released last year, um, uh, October something like that. Maybe I might be able to tell you, but feel free to keep talking. But yeah, just, October eleventh, twenty twenty two. Okay, and I just found out about it. Um, whatever it was a week or a week a week ago, uh-huh. maybe. Um. And now I'm definitely hooked because there's it's just that Animal Crossing grind that definitely attracted me um, to it, and it looks good because it's you're not you're not a small person. Like I love Animal Crossing because that's the that's the look of the people. You're you know you're talking to you have a little the little animals or whatever. But um, I like this because it's kind of humanoid, and you're able to edit or um, edit your person and all that kind of stuff and build your farm and it's way bigger than that. It's huge. You can ride the horses, all kind of stuff around. Um, it's hmm. really cool. It um, actually reminds me a lot of Stardew Valley, but not yes, pixelated. I think uh, some, I was watching somebody who stream or someone who has the YouTube, a YouTuber uh-huh. um, who's talking about Stardew and talking about this and some other games that are like this. Um, and this being one that's, that's really good. Oh, you can play um, guitar. Cool. Have you ever heard of Palia? Yeah, that's that's I think me downloading Palia um whenever who sent that? Did Whittier send that? Maybe, link? I think so. Um uh, led me to or led this to come or up. Or I sent it to Whittier cuz he was looking forward to it. Mm-hmm. This came up and I was like, "Huh, oh, what's Coral Island?" And I looked at the thing. I was like, "Oh, that looks cool. Let me download that and see just see how it is." But um so it's it's really interesting to me how you like these types of games and it's not an insult at all because I uh it's just not for me, but mm-hmm. uh, but I like that about us is what I think makes us more dangerous in the industry uh, because we can have more conversations and things like this uh, because I liked Animal Crossing probably mm-hmm. because of when I was playing it. It was the first time I'd done it, but to me now, these feel... Uh, you alluded to it a little bit in the last episode where you're already playing this game, you know, mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. I have already played this game a couple times to the point that even when it had characters that I really liked when we saw Disney Dreamlight Valley... Um, I didn't get very far in it because I was just kind of already over this type of game. Yeah, and I that's coming from someone who really likes Disney. I do think I like the way Disney Dreamlight Valley uh, presents itself and looks a little bit better than this because mm-hmm. I like uh being well. I think I like being able to control my camera. Yeah, but when I think about it, I've got a lot more time in games like Tunic, and which is not a uh, farming sim, but Tunic or uh, Animal Crossing that don't actually, they are asymmetric. They don't let you control your camera. So maybe that's actually a better format for a game like this. Mm-hmm. I'm really not sure. I'm now just you can zoom in, you can zoom out, you can go left or right, but you can't mm-hmm. turn that thing. Yeah, because it's it's locked camera. Yeah. So you want a little fun fact that I just have in my in my brain nugget right now? Yeah. So this, I'll pull it back up here so everybody can see like the 
the what I'm talking about, like the way it looks. Uh, right. I'm gonna pause it whenever it gets to it. But this type of yeah, this type of view right here that you're seeing right now mm -hmm. is what I believe is largely the reason that Spyro the Dragon, who I love, <laughs> did not do nearly as well in Japan. Because for whatever reason, actually I might even be able to find a better example. For whatever reason uh, that I don't fully understand other than that, I, they just maybe thought that the Japanese market wouldn't, wouldn't do well with a, a moving camera behind uh, the Dragon. Mm-hmm. They locked the camera angle. So uh, I'm going to see if I can find a camera angle for you guys to see. But they locked the camera angle to one position. Uh, let's see. I'll Google Spire of the Dragon in Japan. I'm going to Google Spire of the Dragon gameplay. Japan. Uh, and see if we can get a look at it. This is not it. I may have to try to find a video showing a little piece of it. Uh, yeah, here we go. Here we go. This is it. So, Japanese version of the game. Uh, da, 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 da. All right. See this angle right here? Mm -hmm. And it's the exact same game, but you can't control this camera. Like, you know, the camera's supposed to be behind you. You can move it around and everything. Is it any wonder why this game, people hated it mm -hmm. in Japan? And so Crash Bandicoot was king, but like, could you imagine trying to play this game completely 3D, not open world, it is very linear, but 3D like expression, Yeah. and the camera does swivel, but it does it on its own, and you have no... Con this is garbage. Mm -hmm. I actually blame this, uh, and that's what made me think about it. I blame this, um, this style of camera on why this game did so poorly in, uh, in Japan. And I'm also talking about this mostly because it gives a good example of how it, sometimes this works in like in some games, and uh, other times it, it really doesn't. It, yeah. it really doesn't work. So now in games yeah. like action games like this, where you need to run around, you need to fight. Which there's fighting in Coral Island, but oh, interesting. It's when you're like in that cave, you're fighting the monsters or whatever, uh -huh. and getting like monster parts and stuff. But anyway, um, that games like that. But it's Zelda. still it's still um, is it a cozy, cozy game? No. Well, it's categorized as uh, on Steam has it listed as early access farming sim, life sim, relaxing. relaxing. So probably mm -hmm. it's that. So you really, did, I guess you really don't need the camera to move around all around like that behind you and order all that stuff. But with games like Spyro or games like just any games that requires you to move and jump and uh -huh. do all that kind of stuff, then I would see that camera needing to be in your control. So yeah, absolutely. Well, that's interesting, man. I'm really glad you're enjoying it. I feel like I'd have a hard time committing to it. Not mm -hmm. even saying it's not a good game. I just I just so want you time. to download it so Mermaid can play it. That's yeah. the only reason. Well, I got it going there, so <laughs> yay. <laughs> I know I up, uh, but I, 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 I'm glad that these types of things exist. Uh, back to my game, because you had me download this, so you clearly need to download Call of Duty. Uh, I'll do that when I'm able to. Mobile. I can't do it. How come? Well, because of personal reasons. Is that right? Yeah. Or have you become like a, a pacifist and you're swearing off violence? I don't like killing folks. No. All right. no. no worries. I just took my card off my phone. So I can't. It won't let me download nothing. Even free things? Yeah. Whoa. Which is crazy. See, I'll show you. Apple, get on it, man. Seriously. I'll show you. Okay. Oh, I forget you. You have the, the best phone in the world right no there's newer versions of it but i have a pretty the decent best, uh, i don't know i'm learning let's see. different strokes for different folks i think that my phones so i have a s21 ultra it, it serves my purposes very well uh i was an apple guy forever before that basically and uh, and i had an okay time on that i just now i've lost brand loyalty pretty bad i'm more interested in uh a, a good price a with a great product so uh that's the one See, I had on my app store, I had it set so that free apps didn't even require a password. Well, how do you do that in your uh, in your account settings for uh, the uh, the Apple App Store? We can do that. I can help you with that a little bit later, though. We don't want to accidentally show something to the camera that doxes you. So, <laughs> or get, I mean, your card's not on there, but we don't we don't want to risk aye, it. Aye, aye. Well, Call of Duty Mobile, uh, as it would turn out, uh, pretty good at it. Pretty good <laughs> at it. So, Neutral Warrior, shout out to him. Uh, over on Kick, 
he there's been like a little bit of a uh, a controversy around the app and uh, how it can pair up, you know, touchscreen players against like controller players and vice versa, or people who are playing with emulators on their computers. And uh, and he was the basically he was like, if you are playing with an external device connected, you will never get put into lobbies with. Uh, a person who's only playing on touchscreen, unless you party up with that person. And so you're never actually going to be on touchscreen and lobbying up against somebody that's on a controller, mm. uh, unless you've you know created some thing that makes that happen. Uh, but he's also coming to the defense of people who are like really, really good on touchscreen. Uh, I don't play uh, on t- with touchscreen. I've played a little bit with it, but just to be completely transparent, touchscreen is not the way that I play. Uh, I do use an external device. I find that that's more fun. Uh, but I played enough rounds, and I actually think it's it's really fun because it feels more like classic Call of Duty. Warzone is just too much. I don't want to deal with all that. I don't like newer Call of Duties. I don't like even downloading them because they're 4,000 gigabytes. It takes up all my space, and I'm a content creator. I, the space is important, especially on my new computer because I haven't put an extra uh, hard drive or anything in it yet. And so what I what it came with is what I got. I got I to gotta be protective of it. But, yeah, no, it... um. It it just it feels like a more classic version of the game. Still looks okay because I mean it looks like a mobile game, uh, but I'm really surprised at how well it plays and how much I'm liking it because I almost never think of mobile games as like real games. You know, mm-hmm. like I picture mobile game or when I think of mobile games, I think of games that are in the vein of like Candy Crush, you know, or things like that. So. Yeah, I've been really surprised. I've been really, really surprised that I like it so much. And it turns out after, so you have to play enough rounds that you can unlock ranked. Yeah, I never play ranked on anything. I'm, so I'm you're never playing against good. bots at the beginning. Uh, no, you're playing against other people as well. New, it's just new beginners. Nothing matters. You know, you just you play enough rounds to get used to it, but like it doesn't go towards your your ranking or anything oh, like okay. that. It doesn't help or hurt. Uh, it's just basically like a for funsies type thing. Uh, but you have to play enough of that before you can unlock ranked before you actually get to play into ranked battles. Pretty similar to Fortnite. You know, okay, there's a ranked yeah. and an unranked. And um, I decided, T, that I was going to play a ranked battle because I was consistently <laughs> getting in the regular one. I was consistently getting win after win after yeah, win. I saw your messages. Via, and I was MVP <laughs> every match. To this day, I've only been playing it... Uh, so. There's been some time because I have a long weekend. I've been working a lot, so I haven't played it as much as I'd like to. But at the time of recording to the this day, uh, would you like to guess at how many matches I've lost in that? None. That's correct. I haven't lost a single match, mm-hmm. which means I won. So you have to play three ranked matches to get your rank, right? That means I won all three matches. Tobez, not only did I win all three matches, I was the MVP player for all three matches. I went from bronze, the lowest rank you can do. I don't even remember how many it was. I watched it jump up so much. Do you know what rank I currently am right now after playing this game for two days? Gold. Platinum one. Pro. Platinum one. Pro. I am uh, I'm not the best Call of Duty player. Now, I'm going to say, I will let you know, I played one more ranked battle since that happened, right? The people I'm playing against got a lot harder. <laughs> when you jump from like the bottom to like... Cause it's platinum, but they call it pro. So I'm I'm a pro one is what my my rank is. And when you're playing against other pro ones and pro twos, oh my gosh, are they? Now, did I win that match? You dang straight, I won that match because I'm a pro. I'm a gamer. Let's go. You, I'm ready. And so anyway, basically, uh, add me Webby Pumpkin on uh, Call of Duty Mobile because I'm really enjoying it. I'm really it's enjoying wanting it. me to verify. Um, maybe it's because of the the game. It's like an age requirement or something there's a good chance of that and the game um supports in-app purchases so you know like you can buy a battle pass you know i I got you back bro anyway i'm really enjoying it i'm goaded i'm but uh i want to i want to pick your brain a little bit on this idea that mobile games are not real games because i've always felt like that but call of duty is like pretty well put together and Mm -hmm. i had played PUBG on uh mobile before and it's it's okay like but i mean it's kind of a real game fortnite on mobile is the exact same game uh, of course, Apple people, the last I understand, maybe you, maybe it's changed now, but if you're an Apple person, you actually can't play it on mobile. But you used to be able to. You know about the Fortnite feud with Apple? Mm-mm. Basically, long story short, Apple takes... Apple and Google want a really big cut 
uh, out of any purchases for like V bucks or you know skin or anything like that. Like any purchase you make within the app, they want like thirty percent, I think. And Epic was like, no, like we don't want to pay that much and everything. And so what happened is uh, Apple and Google eventually pulled it off their app stores. So you can't actually, uh, you can't get the game on those app stores anymore. The beauty of Android is that you don't have to get it from the Google App Play Store if you're on Android. I have three different uh, app stores on my Android right now. I have Google Play, which is my preferred. Mm -hmm. I've also got the Samsung Galaxy Store, which came with it. Mm -hmm. I also have the uh, Amazon APK Store. And if none, if it's not on any of those, you can sideload. So I actually have Fortnite. Oh, I did. I think I deleted it. But I had Fortnite on my phone. I downloaded it directly to the Epic Launcher as a sideload, and it's the regular game. And it's the only, to my knowledge, it's the only way to play natively uh, on native hardware on an Android phone is to sideload, and it's the only way you can get updates. If you still have Fortnite on your iPhone, like if you never deleted it, if you delete it, you can't re-download it. It's like a Flappy Bird situation. But if you if you still have it, you can still play it, but you're locked at the version of Fortnite from like five years ago. Wow. And so you can only play with people that are still playing that version of Fortnite. It's kind of crazy, which is basically probably no one at this point. Mm -hmm. uh, but it, it was a really crazy event. It was really entertaining at that time. I learned a lot. Uh, now, it is playable on iPhone now because of other services that have made it possible. Like if you have Xbox Cloud Gaming, you can play Fortnite through Xbox Cloud Gaming on your phone. You can also now play Fortnite through Amazon Luna on your phone, which is really cool. So, mm -hmm. And it supports controllers like the Kishi and the Backbone. So it's it's not perfect because there's still going to be a little input latency and everything, but it, it is a good option. I'm glad that it's there. Those games, uh, circling back, are basically the same game. So, like, are you a gamer if you play mobile games? Because it is, it is kind of fundamentally a different thing, but it's also not. I guess it just means uh, it, it comes down to what do we as a whole consider what gaming is that's that's the question yeah like because it's a game they're games on yeah. your phone and yeah. uh i've always thought of them as games um because we call them games um yep. you know snake all that stuff was like the original phone games yeah um so you're where do you draw the line on it it's just that it's digital i don't know i don't even me i don't draw a line i think it's all games because I can spend as much time on my phone on a game uh -huh. as I'm spending that same amount of time on a game on my computer or a game on a console. Um, it's just I can put as much time in that just like on my phone because I've done that with Pokemon Go. <laughs> that's, so. that's a really interesting thing, though. If you don't draw any lines, that means the people who are playing D&D &D are gamers. The people who are like any board, board game, any tabletop game are mm -hmm. gamers. Uh, theoretically athletes people who are playing football and soccer and baseball are gamers now i just I, you know I, I mean? maybe like fit uh visual games or visual video gamer. it's got to be digital for me like like i don't know the proper term if you are like a, a person who plays D, &D mm -hmm. but that is tabletop mm -hmm. like these are video games that's mm -hmm. tabletop sure you're a gamer and you're equally as nerdy kudos yeah. we love you uh we're not against you but uh probably but that's smart, not video probably gaming. smarter too Maybe uh, creative, perhaps creative. for certain, and uh, or imaginative. <clears throat> yeah. But um, so like that's a different thing. But if, so for me, in the context of I'm a gamer that we're using in this video game industry, it does have to be video games for mm -hmm. me. But like those things are very much not created equal. Like there's a big difference in a Call of Duty and a Sims. Mm -hmm. There's a big difference in a uh what was the the old farming game that was on facebook farmville yeah like a farmville versus even a coral island yeah. like that's that's very different or a my singing monsters which is a, just a, a check-in wait game there's a name for that but like you're really not doing anything you're just it's a time sink game you go in and you collect money and then you just wait till it's time to collect money again mm -hmm. like that's a task but that it's that doesn't feel like a game to me because you're not really playing. You're just clicking and waiting and yeah. clicking and waiting. And But is that like, like am I excommunicating people? You know? Because it is video. You know? It, it is video. I don't know. Or, you know, what if you play games like Word Crosses or like Sudoku mm -hmm. on your phone? Because mm -hmm. you can. I mean, you can also play them on your computer. Yep. But those are not 
video games. There's digital versions of versions of, games. of um of paper games. Yeah. You know? mm-hmm. Like so I don't know where the line is there, but I think we're at a point where it's going to get harder and harder to not consider mobile players as traditional or in the same category as traditional video game players because of games like Call of Duty Mobile and the like. And the iPhone 15 is out. Mm -hmm. And the iPhone 15 iOS uh, has kind of partnered them and then the new, uh, I forget what it's called, Apple's new headset. It's like their answer to the Oculus. You know what I'm talking about? Um, I want to call it Wonder Vision, but that's not what it's called. Uh, if you think about it, let me know. It doesn't. It doesn't matter that much. I might actually can just Google it real quick. I was just so, say, like, Apple in front of that beautiful headset. computer. Uh, Vision Pro. It's Apple Vision Pro. Like that's going to partner with Unity and obviously the like gaming said, and everything there. Uh, I said Wonder Vision, ah. but so it's pretty close. <laughs> but when you think of things like that, like the new iPhone and the new iOS that it's running, one of the it's going to be able to play games. And one of the launch games is Resident Evil 4. Mm-hmm. And then later, Resident Evil Village is coming to it. Those are, well, time will tell how well they play. But those are full-fledged, like, real games, you know? Like, mm-hmm. those real games that are going to be running on your iPhone. If they get that running, especially with the iPhone 15 supporting USB-C, like, there's nothing that says you can't plug, like, a USB dongle, the same one I use for my Steam Deck or something, or, you know, a docking station... Uh, into your phone then and it's got usbs on it and then you got a controller connected and a monitor connected to your iphone Mm -hmm. and you're playing your games off your iphone and i personally think that we've been moving towards a world of decent cloud streaming games for a while now because xbox cloud streaming on your phone it's great like if you've got a decent internet connection it honestly isn't out of bad it's not a bad experience it's great luna honestly i wish it had achievements but I was a pro, uh, a beta tester for Luna. I still have my Luna subscription. I don't really use it very often because it needs more newer games or achievements, something that's going to draw me to play it there. But if the game is available on Luna and is not available anywhere else, I'll play it on Luna because I don't want to buy it. Mm-hmm. And it's pretty good. And that's not even using the Luna controller. Like I've streamed it to my phone. Plays great. Streamed it on computer. Plays great. Plays great. with the, They have a couch mode where I can send you a code. And you can pull it up on your phone or whatnot and play it off of my instance. And it's like very unnoticeable latency. It plays great. So there's a place. There's a place for your phone to be your console in 20, probably as early. I mean, we're kind of already there, but definitely no later than end of 2024, early 2025. I think people might be saying like, Oh man, you gonna buy the next Xbox or the new PlayStation? No, I think I'm gonna get the iPhone 17, and that could be their thing. Isn't I mean, that crazy? What, I wonder what the print percentage of people who um, play mobile games just play mobile games. So, act, it's funny that you say that. So, uh, I think that's actually the largest percentage of gamers. I'm gonna look it up right now. Uh, per right. Wait, just playing mobile games? Yes. Or- huh. So mobile games is the most popular uh, smartphone activity in the United States with roughly 39% of smartphone owners using their mobile device for gaming at least once a week. Um, but who's who's to say that they're not playing console games or PC games? Well, that specifically did say mo- you Well, what did it specifically say? Uh, owners use their mobile devices for gaming. Okay, so it could be either. Let's see. Mobile games versus console games. Uh statistics and this is uh yeah all right in 2022 uh we can base it off of money a little bit maybe that'll help us in 2022 mobile games generated approximately 91.8 billion u.s dollars in annual revenue accounting for 50 percent of the global gaming market during the measured period console games were ranked second with 52.2 billion u.s dollars in global revenue so that means 50 percent of all money and all income and everything that's happening in gaming is happening on phones Dude, it's because everybody has a phone, and we need a phone. Well, yeah, and <laughs> well, uh, pretty much everyone does have a basically a mini computer in their pocket. Yeah. Uh, now, I think that's a little um, opportunistic at best, um, predatorial at worst, because especially when you think of like kids and everything that have phones, mm-hmm. how many 
actually to pass, let's tell a little story. Let's talk, t- let's talk a story about Pokemon Go because here's a fundamental difference. And, um, well, I'm, do you mind if I just question you a little bit? Yeah. You do mind? Okay. No, I'm gonna no, 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 go ahead. I understand. I'm, I'm sorry. Uh, no, you're funny. You're good. I'm just picking with you. I, all right. So you play Pokemon Go mm-hmm. and you also played, uh, like Pokemon Scarlet and Pokemon Arceus. Yes. Pokemon. I don't know if you were a sword or a shield guy, but one I or the other. I was a shield guy. Shield guy. I was a sword guy. We've always played the opposite I game love of each Mazin, other. Mazinta. That's awesome. All right. Of those games, just think of one game at a time. Do you think you have spent more money on Pokemon Go or Pokemon Scarlet? <laughs> you laugh because you immediately know the answer. No, no, no. I, I probably spent more money on. Um, um, Sword and Shield. Well, you said go. I'm gonna say Scarlet. Probably Pokemon Go versus. That's Scarlet. what I thought. Scarlet. I mean, sorry, Sword and Shield. Yes, and we can get into that story because that's a little <laughs> bit. That's a little more nuanced, and it's a funny story. We can talk about it. It's if not you want. funny. No, it's not. It's not. Uh, it's Nintendo. not bad. It is kind of funny, but Nintendo. Some of the stuff you did is hilarious. Actually, I kind of do want to talk about it in a second if there's time. Oh I want to make this point, and then if you're up for it, we'll talk about it. So you spent, uh, that was one of the last $60 games, I think, right? So you spent $60 on Scarlet. Mm-hmm. You've mm-hmm. also, mm-hmm. you bought you both the, of them. You got the bundle, or I got, I know I got the bundle. I got the bundle, but I, I got the bundle because I was also buying the game for someone else. So mm-hmm. I don't have both games. Mm-hmm. Um, thank goodness. No. <laughs> all right. So you did buy, so you're at a hundred. All right. That's even a good point. So $120 for both games. And then how much was the DLC? Do you remember? Maybe thirty something. Okay, so we'll say thirty to thirty-one. 30, we'll roughly say you spent one hundred and fifty dollars on that console generation of games. Mm-hmm. How much money do you think you've spent on Pokemon Go? It's been what seven years. Yeah, right at it. Mm. I had like access to it all day on my phone. That's that is the point that I'm making. Mm. Is that it's almost predatorial. There's no re like you have to pay to solve problems that the Pokemon company created. Mm-hmm. Like you don't have enough room in your digital fake backpack <laughs> for your Pokeballs at this Pokestop. So pay us more oh, and you yeah. can have more. You like, got me. It's not even a question of like, like that stuff could be stored to your device. Like maybe you didn't have to be cloud synced, but it's stored to your device or to your Google account that you had to have to sign up for the thing. Mm-hmm. Like let it be stored to that Google data, and but it's not. And so that's what I mean. And they hit you with that all the time: buy an incense, buy a raid pass, buy more Pokeballs because you're out before before COVID. Yeah, when it just came out, like that that whole community thing, uh-huh. all the community events, um, and even. Uh, during COVID, they figured out a way to get your money as well because mm-hmm. of the, uh, what is it? The, uh... There was something to let you travel, right? When you couldn't move. <sighs> Jesus. It's the raid passes. That's raid passes? So raid passes let, is let that you... the same thing that would let you like fight in a raid battle that's like 40 miles away even though you're not there? Um, So that was a partner partner app. Um, okay. Before, before they got their own thing, which is like the campfire thing or whatever okay but it was like the genie genie app um or other apps um i think people in the discord um which the raid passes were oh, were um required for that yes but so it was basically a, a hack so you yeah. could pretend that you're in another spot yeah see i thought and maybe they which did you later. just you don't you don't i mean people had hacks for like uh um running around and changing the map and all that other kind of stuff stuff you can't do um, which I think they got rid of that um, mm-hmm. with Pokemon Go. But this one, if you had a raid pass, then you're able to play at somebody's gym. Like somebody can send you an invite to okay. play at their gym in Hong Kong or in in um, all these other places over the water. Um, oh. You're able to play. And then that became something in the game where um, you get rewards for playing at gyms outside of your state. So it's like a whole global thing, worldwide thing. So they found a way, in a in a sense, they found a way to make even more money off of this cool mm-hmm. thing that mm-hmm. was a necessity because of COVID. Mm-hmm. That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> and mobile games do that like crazy. It's usually there's usually two things with mobile games that are just infuriating. It's um, an ad every ten seconds, 
or uh, pay ten dollars to get no ads, That's and right. then pay more money anyway in there to. Basically, my biggest gripe with most mobile games is that they're pay to win. Give me your money. That's that's a good business um, structure. It's an effective one. I struggle to call it good, but it is effective because <laughs> I think it's very effective. I think anything that's predatorial and takes advantage of people uh, is not it's good, not good yeah. and that's totally what it is. Like it's it's taking advantage of like that is how they the make dopamine a living. hit. You know, it's how they make a living. How they pay all these people. Yeah, yeah, I get it. Well, that's a whole another can of worms <laughs> on if the money is actually. Uh, making Good its money. way to the uh, oh, well, ha- if how much they're actually paying their people or how much there's padding pockets, we're not going to get into too much of that because that's heavier than where I wanted to go with this episode. But that's what I mean. So if you consider that, I think that is something that has to be taking like weighed in the balance when you look at you know it being ninety one point eight billion dollars in revenue in twenty twenty two for consoles, but how much of that was like we're doing this or I don't know how many games have like a subscription type model, but how many subscriptions have you had that you were had well intended to like cancel or you were going to get rid of or that you forgot about. And then, you know, you've had it for a year and oh my gosh, I spent $120 on this thing I never used. Mm-hmm. And like, it's just, just like my uh, gym not good. <laughs> I actually really did that with magazines one time whenever I was, uh, for when I first moved down here, I did, I went to books a million. I'm going to, let everybody know who did this to me. I went to Books a Million, mm, and mm, uh, mm. you know they offered the free magazine. Turns out it's a trial. I didn't know this though. I thought at the end of your trial, like when the magazines were done, I, I barely ever even I looked at them, but I was like, I don't care about these magazines. Um, I didn't realize that Books a Million would give your credit card information that you used to make the purchase to People Magazine or whatever the company was that was doing this, huh. and it would just automatically go. I paid a hundred dollars a month unknowingly because I wasn't keeping up with it for ma- for three magazines that I didn't care about that I just selected because they said it was free at Books A Million for two years. A hundred dollars a month? Yes. I was I wasn't even livid, Topaz. I was <laughs> I was sick with myself. Like that's a disgusting feeling when you look back and you're like I just spent I just spent twenty four hundred dollars. On paper, I don't care about. That's in the trash. Lives there. I didn't even cut it up and make like threatening like letters to send to people on Halloween. You know what I'm talking <laughs> about? Like there could have been use. I could have been making paper mache or something. The I, I would have made a palace out of paper mache anyway. <laughs> Dang, dude! Sometimes you gotta laugh and not cry. No, that was years ago. Now that makes I me want to make sure I have like. What is it, Rocket Money? Or it's Rocket Money now, not sponsored, but Rocket Money. Hit us up. <laughs> I'm the perfect candidate for your app. <laughs> but for real, like, and I'm Shucks. I'm even like that now with things like, uh, it took me a little while to just out of being busy. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm I'm cutting back on subscriptions right now because like I paid for the Disney Plus, for example, like full bundle that came with Hulu and ESPN. I never used ESPN, but I thought it was a pretty decent de- uh, deal. But I realized that I also very very rarely ever log into Hulu. And as of October 27th, I think is when it is, Disney Plus is going up. And the base price for Disney Plus with no ads, because they're adding ads to it, Mm -hmm. the base price for Disney Plus with no ads is the same price that the entire bundle used to be. I was like, I ain't doing that. So Mm -hmm. I've updated that. Thank goodness I did that. And then we got, we ended up getting Netflix again, but Netflix with ads. But I'm trying to cut back on things. One of my biggest subscriptions is the Adobe Suite. So uh, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe to the channel because I need the Adobe Suite to make this content. And uh, I'm getting the student benefit for it right now while while I'm still grandfathered and left in. But uh, the Adobe Suite is $60 a month. Mm. Uh, And that's just to edit these videos and podcasts that I don't make any money from. So... Mm. Please give some love. It doesn't cost you anything to hit that subscribe button, hit that follow button, and share this channel and podcast with the friends. The grind is real, real, but yeah. your harvest. That's why Webby Pumpkin hasn't been profitable. So, but this year's goal was to be to break even. You know, your harvest, harvest. will produce. I hope so. Fruit of pumpkins that will be. I don't know. <laughs> I, um, it's not all about the money, of course. Like I just enjoy doing this, but, um, I will have to make decisions to like pivot, to try to reduce costs, which mm-hmm. would be potentially be more work for me. Cause I already know how to use the Adobe suite. Um, I'd have to learn new software, uh, to be able to continue to do this. And so anyway, that's neither here nor there. 
Uh, it's kind of in related, but not really. It's just one of those things where like, I mostly do it because I, I like making content. I really yeah. enjoy doing this stuff. And you like, you mm -hmm. like the people. I love the people. Yeah, love yeah. the pumpkin patch. It we, gives we've me known this from your story. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and I um love the uh like I love that it the gives me an excuse that, that I basically get to make you come over every week oh. or every other week, you know. So it's good. I'm always for that. down to hang with my brother. Let's go. I'm, I'm with it. Let's go. We'll have to do it again soon. I, was, I thought you. Were, I so I didn't see it until the corner room. of my eye, and then I was like, oh wait, he's he's waiting on me. I can't leave it. I can't leave him hanging. Um. Anyway, so that's that. Uh, where are we at on our time right now? Let's look. Uh, forty nine minutes. I tell you what, when you get us in a room together, we can chat. Some people like to talk. Some people want it all. Some people like to listen. I mean, but I don't want nothing at all. If it ain't you, Webby. <laughs> I don't have you, Webby. Oh, my gosh. I love, uh, <laughs> there's a guy named Slick on uh, Twitch. And check him out. And, um, yep, he sings that song to me. We go way back. We used to sing that on Mixer when we were over there. And uh, I love that you came over on a raid when he said, if I ain't got you, Webby, if I ain't got you, let's go. Love that dude. Um, yeah, that's mostly what I wanted to share. I'm, I, I do want to peer pressure you into Call of Duty Mobile because I got phobic to download it. I got at least four people in Tuesday night stream to download it. Uh, my finer, my nephew is about to start playing it again. I'm building my clan, like, and I'm thinking about calling it the Pump Clan. Okay. And that, but is that is that lame or is that really cool? You took too long. No, I, oh, I understand now. No, no, no. I'm li I'm 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 slow at getting it. Okay. The pump clan yeah because uh like a, pump can yep but a pump mm, clan you can't <laughs> yeah you just ruined it like now like you didn't ruin it it was probably already on the edge and you were like this could be a good idea and just pushed it over the mountain shot the top so yeah no. there's nothing better than that moment right there <laughs> now I, I was thinking it because uh, that's what like uh your squad basically like uh, uh that's not the right word. You can basically make a team mm -hmm. uh, essentially in the game, mm -hmm. and it's called a clan, mm -hmm. or at least that's what Loki Rampage told me it was called. Uh, okay. She could be wrong. And then I was like, oh, the Pumpkin Clan, and I was like, what if I just call it the Pump Clan? Okay, that works. I appreciate that, but uh, but that feels wrong. Like it doesn't feel like what the name should actually be called. It feels like it should be called like a squadron or something, you know? Because it's, it's a oh, military game. Or you can do the you know? Webby Webby Clan. Like Webby can. Listen, if it's a squadron and I can call it whatever I want, I'm gonna call it the National Gord. You like that, don't you? Yeah. You get it? So you weren't slow on that one. Maybe that's a better hit. That's what my subscribers are called on Twitch. So if you want to join the National <laughs> Gord and support this channel in my uh in my Adobe subscription, uh then you can do that. Twitch.tv slash Webby Pumpkin. You you said something about uh A lot of things. <laughs> wanting to wanting to I don't know what you said. You said something about doing this later um, involving me and saying some. I don't remember what it was. I don't know. And but I'll, you wanted you wanted to what? talk about something else. Oh yeah, tell us about how much money you spent on uh, Sword oh, okay. and Shield. Dang. All right, so <laughs> that's so what it was. <laughs> you haven't spent. You didn't spend too much money on the game and DLC itself. That's about the same as what you paid on Scarlet and Violet. Thanks, Memory Vitamins. What? <laughs> What did you do, Topaz? That cost that caused you to spend so much money on this game. I was baffled when I heard this the first time. I don't know what I did. Oh, you want me you you want me to buffer it? You want me to grease the wheels and send you forward a little bit with what you did? Sure. There were websites that you could go on where you Oh could... yeah, I went to uh <laughs> <laughs> and immediately was like, it's like Oh to... man, motor's running now, let's go. Well I mean Yeah. Um I definitely bought some bought some some nice Pokemon. Yep. It's that I want one in every color. I like, shiny was I want, my favorite variant. I want six shiny legendary Pokemon. So I did that. For and, $60. And, which I... Ooh. I probably spent a lot of money there. Um, <laughs> but... Yeah. <laughs> probably spent a lot of money there. I didn't need it more than likely. Spent a lot of money. Spent? 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 Yep. Hey, yeah, gone. Which one is it? Uh... A lot of money Wasted. there, but I also uh, rate not rated. Um, Raised little baby Pokemon to be the very best that no I one ever also was. hunted shinies. You know, all my shinies aren't bought. Oh. Guys, okay, guys. So takes you a lot of time on hunting, and then uh, catching people's uh, stream. Uh, what, don't worry about it. Uh, but um, 
Wait, would you go into people's streams who are like giving away hush, Pokemon? Hush away now. Hush away. Hush. <laughs> yeah. All right. Um. So yeah, that. But the the only the thing that sucks about all of that for me is um, Nintendo and their mm. their cloud. So I ended up buying a OLED Switch. And I had all this stuff on my Switch, uh, my first Switch. Your V1. Mm-hmm. Didn't think or didn't even realize or didn't even know. I was thinking that this was one of the games that that your stuff is on the cloud, you know, all, always and all the time. This this was a, a Shield. Mm-hmm. Um, so I ended up getting that and uh, I probably transferred. I feel like I transferred some stuff in store. Um he let me hook it up and transfer stuff like that or whatever in store. But Shield was not one of those things because I thought it was automatically because mm, it makes sense. Did it. it makes sense to be that when you because so many people think of Pokemon as a Nintendo game, mm-hmm. uh, but it's not actually. It's a Pokemon company game. Mm-hmm. It's a it's a what is that called? Uh, it's not a um, first. It's a second party. It's a second party game. It's not a first party game. So some I, people don't know that. I ended up losing all of my all of my stuff, all of my time. All I don't even remember how much, how much time I put in that game before. Uh, it's probably on my um. I think it's it's still on my on my thing. Um, but I ended up losing all of that, all that time spent, mm-hmm. and it hurt so bad because I put, <laughs> I was still going to put more time in this game. And I think this was around the time the DLCs, yeah, yeah, around the time the DLCs were released for Sword and Shield. Um, so. I in I mean I got the DLCs because I had the games um or whatever but I had to restart at the beginning um before I played the DLCs. I actually I actually kind of enjoyed Sword and Shield. Yeah, it was I played Sword it was, it was okay. It had its weird bugs and everything but I, I actually thought it was pretty good. It's been mm-hmm. a good bit of time in the wilds. Mm-hmm. That is the only game like so I've played a a handful of Pokémon uh, that is the only Pokemon game that I've ever actively had like shinies in, mm-hmm. um, and I've got some cool shinies now. Arceus, um, Arceus, mm-hmm. whichever, however you say it, that I think that was probably the easiest shiny hunting game. And see, I have no shinies in it, but the hardest because if you're flying in, wait, wait a minute, it would make the print yeah, yeah. as you're flying over. Yeah, you're fly- what do you fly over with? With the bird, uh, uh, ah, Braviary. Yep, that's right. I forget. Oh man, because you had the you had Braviary. You had uh, mm-hmm. uh, well, uh, the, the deer, specific weird deer, weird deer. You mm-hmm. had uh, all those riding. Po- you that's, had the big bear. Yeah, that mm-hmm. was cool. Now I do wish um, Scarlet and Violet had multiple riding Pokemon. Yeah. Um, the uh, um, what? Is, oh my gosh! I just wish the Scarlet and Violet me. ran at a steady frame um, rate. Maridon and and Karidon, um, I do love them, um, but it'd be nice to be able to ride like their mm-hmm. past form or their first form, which is a uh, the little bike lizard dude, little bike. Oh lizard. And, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. And, what was uh, that? Because you can catch him, right? Yes, but you can't ride him, right? And that blew my mind because that's what and everybody they're, else they're is park, riding. They're parked at the uh, little station. That yep. would have been a, an amazing thing to kind of be able to access that. You ever notice that everybody else is just a little weird things in the game. Everybody else is riding those, mm-hmm. and nobody thinks it's weird that you're on a legendary. <laughs> I know they're just like, "What up?" Now that thing love them sandwiches. I they- kind of thought that if we if you got into a game together, like say you and I, obviously we have different legendaries because mm-hmm. yours is red and mine's the blue, uh, purple, but or violet. But I kind of thought that if like we were both on violet, no, nah, this is way more coding than than Pokemon Company would ever put into this. But it would have been cool if on in your game, I was on the green one. Mm-hmm. and Because you had the legendary, right? And there's not multiple of the same Pokemon. Mm-hmm. And then uh, on my game, I was on the legendary, but you would be on the green one. Wow. Uh, that would have been a really cool little touch. That would have been cool. Uh, of course. Of course because they didn't Because you'd be kind of hosting it, hosting it mm-hmm. or whatever. Um, and you'd be riding yours. Now, something I do like about the game, which might would bring me back to it if we ever played again, that I thought was so cool. Uh, and maybe it works a little bit better now, is that when you are in the same instance together, like if you were going to play, you literally don't have to be together at all. Mm-hmm. You can just go into the same world yeah. and go do your own and thing. And I'll be like, wait, where are you? 
I think there's a bit now you tell me if I'm wrong. Cause I don't know, but I think there's a benefit to that too. So like, say if we're in varying versions, like mm-hmm. if I'm trying to complete my Pokedex, if I'm not mistaken, yeah, you can get if I join versions. yours, yeah, yeah. I, your exclusives will pop up, right? Yeah. I think they'll, I think all of them will pop up like yours in, no, 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 my, would mine's pop up for you I don't and think yours so. pop up for me? I wouldn't think so because you're in my game. Whoever's hosting, I would think. I gotta, don't know. We got to try it out because we only did it like one time. Yeah, I want to team up and do some raid battle type stuff. That could, something to make me kind of maybe come back and mm-hmm. play it a little bit. I mean, That's you don't even good. have to come back and play a little bit. Let's just do that. I really wanted the Mewtwo, but I don't want to put in the time it takes to be like a whatever that was. A oh, rank boy. Rank six or something. Do you know how many times I tried to fight that Mewtwo? Even with the... Uh, the uh the DLC YouTube Pokemon? um um build your Pokemon up and you'll have this Pokemon to fight this Mewtwo. You need this Pokemon. I think it's the Muse. Yeah. It's like a team of Muse that'll I still couldn't get them. Wow. To this day. But the Mewtwo I have that's in the game is the one I transferred from Pokemon Home. So the Mew that I have and oh that might have been what messed you up. See I might could have helped you because the Mew I have in the game is the one that I got from the event. Like that they gave away to everybody. Oh, yeah. I got that one. Oh, so you have two. Wait, you said you're Mewtwo. Mewtwo. Which, yeah. I okay. got I got that Mewtwo. I mean, I got that Mew. And then I transferred my shiny Mew from home. Neat. Where did I get the shiny Mew, you ask? Where did you get it? Yeah. <laughs> you tell me because I don't know. Okay. It could have came from a lot of places. No, 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 no. Let's go. That's where it came from. It came from Let's Go? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Because you could act. Wait, no, the only way to get a Mew in that was to get it Soft out of the vault. Reset. You'll have to explain Software to that reset. after stream how you would soft rate, because the only way you could get it was through the Pokeball Plus. So how did you soft reset uh, a gift that came out of the Pokeball Plus? You would have just had to have been incredibly lucky to get a shiny I, regular Mew. I feel like, I, in my mind, I got that shiny Mew from... You definitely soft reset a lot and got a shiny Articuno. Don't worry about it, guys. I know where it came from. All right, you're going to tell me afterwards. Yeah. We're going to have to start a Patreon or something to have bonus <laughs> episodes for all these secret, illegal things you do. <laughs> Actually, let me know. We'll talk about that. That's something. It's more work for me. That's something I've really thought about doing, though, to try to help monetize the But channel. it was from Let's Go. Okay. Like, it's a Let's Go Pokemon. Yeah. Well, guys, I think that's basically it for us tonight. Thank you guys so much for watching, commenting, subscribing, liking. If you're listening to the audio podcast, thank you so much for listening to the end. Be sure to like the podcast and rate us five stars. That helps with our placement on those prospective audio platforms. If you're watching on YouTube, be sure to like, comment, subscribe, like I said before. Even if you can't mm-hmm. think of anything to say, drop a drop a picture or an emoji of your, your favorite emoji. Or just be like, Topaz is sketchy. Uh, I am with his Pokemon career whatever you want to say uh, as long as it is appropriate please comment it below below. we'd love to hear from you thank you guys if you're catching this video live in the premiere we love you thank you so much for being here live on a Monday night just to hang out with us I'm so glad that you're here and that you made it all the way to the end of the video and uh, yeah I think that's basically everything that I have to say do you have anything that you'd like to add there Topaz Um, not really Um, um 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 Web's out. I love that you do that every time.